Goat's Milk Soap is one of the most luxurious, creamy, and sensitive recipes that you can make. Unfortunately, it's also a little bit challenging because milk, like other sugars, can scorch during the soap making process. So today I'm going to show you how to make a very simple goat's milk soap that will not scorch and you don't have to even freeze the goat milk like you'll see in other recipes. The recipe and video I'm about to take you through comes from my Natural Soap Making for Beginners online course. And it is a course that gears the absolute beginner up to making cold processed soap at home in your kitchen. And it covers everything from natural soap ingredients to the equipment that you'll need, setting up your soap making station. And I take you through step by step how to make very simple soap recipes using a wide array of different types of ingredients. Now let's get on to the recipe. These beautiful and simple bars of soap are made with goat's milk. And goat's milk is an ingredient that you can use to replace some or all of the water content in soap recipes. And it creates bars that are very gentle, sensitive, and have creamy lather. A lot of people swear by goat's milk and it's one of the most popular additives that you can put into soap recipes. And if you have a source of local goat's milk or you have some on your own homestead or farm, more reason to use it. Now, goat's milk and other dairy milks are challenging to use in soap recipes because it has a tendency to scorch. But this recipe is going to show you how to use goat's milk and you can apply this to other dairy milk recipes as well without having your recipes scorch. They're, they'll turn out light colored, beautiful, and smell lovely. The ingredients for this simple goat's milk soap recipe are very simple. And we have the exact amount of coconut oil and shea butter as we have in the past two recipes, the same amount of castor oil and olive oil, the same amount of lye, sodium hydroxide, but we do have a difference in the water amount. There's just half the amount of water that we have been using and the other half is made up with the goat's milk. There are also two essential oils that we're using in this recipe for a lovely floral, but also citrusy scent, and they are Mei Chang and lavender essential oils. My gloves are on. I have the distilled water, the sodium hydroxide ready to go, and I need to put my goggles on to protect my eyes. Let me do that really quick. Now, we are going to be making the lye solution just like we have been for the last two recipes, but there's a difference this time in that there's a lot less distilled water. And in fact, there's 63 grams of sodium hydroxide, the lye here in the ramekin, there's 63 grams of distilled water. And this is the bare minimum amount of water that you can use to make a lye solution, a 50-50 match when it comes to weights. So, in we go, and we're just going to mix it the same way that we have been, but we're going to be careful this time because this is quite a strong lye solution. The fumes will be a little bit stronger and it'll be a stronger solution. So do be careful. So it has a lot more caustic action per droplet of it. Give it a good stir. And when I'm stirring, I'm, I'm feeling for any of the lye crystals at the bottom and giving them a good stir. We don't want a hard crust forming at the bottom and that's a, a real worry if you don't stir it together really, really well. Another thing that I should point out is that the jugs that I'm using are clear. So I can look from the side here and I can see that the lye is all dissolved. If you're working with jugs that are not transparent, then you might not be able to tell if there's still some lye at the bottom. Okay, that's dissolved. Time to start cooling. This next step will be getting familiar now. We're putting the heat source onto low, so it's on number two, and we're going to melt the solid oils, the coconut oil and the shea butter. This should feel really familiar now. Just keep moving the oils around in the pan until they're just melted. 
The coconut oil and the shea butter are completely melted. And the next step is one we've done before, and it's adding in the liquid oils. So the oils that are liquid at room temperature. I'm stirring them together so that the castor oil gets mixed in with the olive oil and is easier to move. And then I'm going to pour it against my spatula just to reduce the chance of air bubbles forming in my soap bars later. It's good. Give it a good scrape out. And then the next ingredient is a little different. We're going to be adding the goat's milk. I'm mixing the oils together and now I'm just going to pour the liquid milk right into the pan. And the reason that I'm doing this is that it will help to cool down the oils a little bit. But also, if you add milk to soap when it's really hot, then it has a chance or an, an opportunity to scorch, meaning it will turn yellow to brown and it might leave an unpleasant scent in your bars. But by putting it in right now, I'm allowing the milk to cool alongside the oils. It's now 103, so it's just about ready to make soap. And when I add the lye solution that's also cooled to that temperature, then there's not going to be any scorching action. It's super easy. You'll see other goat's milk soap recipes that have you freeze the, the milk and do all kinds of things, and you might not succeed with those recipes because they can be complicated and not always give the result that you want. But with this one, you will. Let's check the temperature of the lye solution. 109 and 100. I'm just going to cool the lye solution just a little bit more. With this recipe in particular, you want it to be 100 degrees or lower. You don't want it any warmer because that warmth will encourage scorching with that milk. So I'm gonna put this right back into the water to cool a little bit more. While the lye solution is cooling, let's chat about all of those little droplets that you see there. You might see all of the goat's milk in there in small droplets and be a bit worried. Don't be worried about that at all. It's just because oil and water don't mix together easily. And at this stage, they're separating. So the goat's milk is separating into little droplets. Don't worry, because as soon as we add the lye solution and start mixing, it's going to emulsify together. Let's take another reading. So the oils and the milk, are now 98 and the lye solution, let's give it a stir, it's 97, that's perfect. Don't get hung up over getting them absolutely perfect right on the dot to 100. Remember, they can be within 10 degrees of one another, these two containers of ingredients. Just try to keep this recipe 100 degrees or a little bit less than that. Okay, so we're going to now pour the lye solution through the sieve and against that spatula. And we have the immersion blender ready to go as well. Pop that in there for safety. And then give this a bit of a stir first. It goes a slightly creamy color, but that lightens out once the soap is poured. Okay, let's put the spatula here in the jug, and now it's time for the immersion blender. So in at an angle, tap to burp, and then hold it down to the bottom of the pan, pulse, and then when it's turned off, you can stir. Stir in a figure of eight, just gently bring it back, press it against the bottom of the pan and pulse a couple more times. And then stir. And again, we're looking for that really light trace, light to medium trace. It's your choice. And you should just see a drizzle on the surface of the soap when you look closely. Let's have a look. So if I lift my immersion blender out, oh yes, now that we have a really nice 
medium trace going on, it's time to put in our essential oils. So it's going to be one teaspoon of Mei Chang. So I'll put a teaspoon in, stir it in together. Oh, that smells incredible. Now Mei Chang is one of the few citrus essential oils that will last in handmade soap. A lot of them, so just the, the bog standard lemon or tangerine or orange essential oils, they fade after even just a couple of days in soap recipes. It can be very disappointing, but Mei Chang doesn't do that. And now we're gonna put in two teaspoons of lavender essential oil. Stir that in as well. This is a really gorgeous and simple blend. And I think that you'll enjoy it. That citrus and lavender just go together so well. And now we're gonna pour it into the molds. With this recipe, we're going to finish off the tops with a very simple design or a pattern, texture rather. You can of course decorate your soaps however you'd like, but I think something as lovely and simple and beautiful as this goat's milk soap recipe, it really doesn't need much to make it stand out. And if you are marketing this towards your customers as a really sensitive, gentle soap, just keeping it simple in its design can often share that message of it being a simple, gentle soap as well. Okay, that looks good. Let's give it a bit of a shake. Settle that soap into all of the corners. And we're just gonna wait a minute or so just for the soap to firm up a little bit more before we add the texture. It's been about a minute and I've just put the skewer in, I can see that it's holding form. So it's time to put in a little bit of a pattern. Now this is just an ordinary bamboo skewer and all I'm gonna do is make tiny little circles, one direction and then reverse them and come back. Little circles and then little circles in the opposite direction. And that's it. So the next one, little circles and then back. And it's really quite pleasing seeing that very gentle and subtle pattern at the tops of your soap. And here we are, we're finished making the soap, adding the texture and now to wait two days before taking it out of the soap mold. And again, it does look quite a bit darker from the finished bar, don't worry about that. It will lighten up. Just leave it out on a counter, don't insulate it, don't do anything, just leave it and then come back to it in a couple of days and then we'll move on to the next step. It's been two days and the goat's milk soap is fully hardened, it's a lot lighter in color than when you poured it and it's ready for you to take it out of the molds. So just pull at the edges just to loosen up the sides a bit, always helps. And then pop your soap out of the mold. They should come out really easily. Nice creamy bars of soap with that lovely texture on the top. All of the soap bars popped out easily but the edge isn't necessarily super smooth. So I'm just running my finger along the edge and this will just help to clean it up a little bit. Notice that I'm wearing my gloves when I do this. My goat milk soap is now completely made. It's hardened. It looks like real soap. And now all it needs is to cure for four to six weeks. And then after that, I can use it and gift it and if I were a seller of handmade soaps, I could sell it at that point as well. Look at how lovely that texture is. So subtle, so beautiful. This recipe is from my Natural Soap Making for Beginners online course, which takes you through step-by-step -step 
videos just like this to have you making soap from scratch from the comfort of your kitchen in no time at all. And I will put more information on where you can learn more about the course and enroll down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.